Hi everyone, this lesson is on three possible health consequences of gabapentin use. So before we talk about the three health consequences, let's talk about what gabapentin is, how it works, and some of the more common side effects of gabapentin. So gabapentin, or Neurontin, as it is also known, is a gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA analog. So GABA is a neurotransmitter and it's the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter. So this particular neurotransmitter suppresses other neuronal activity. So it inhibits neuronal functioning. And gabapentin is used to treat partial seizures and post herpetic neuralgia. So in its ability to suppress neuronal functioning, it can help with partial seizures and post herpetic neuralgia. Neuralgia is nerve pain and post herpetic refers to it being nerve pain that occurs after a shingles infection. So those are the two official conditions gabapentin is used for, but it also has many off-label uses, including for restless leg syndrome, fibromyalgia, diabetic neuropathy, and irritable bowel syndrome. But gabapentin use can cause certain side effects. Some of these include drowsiness and fatigue, dizziness, ataxia or clumsiness, you can think of it like that, difficulty with motor coordination, and also have tremors and gastrointestinal side effects as well. But in this lesson, we're going to discuss three important health consequences that we want to look out for and think about when giving gabapentin. And one of those important health consequences of gabapentin use is weight gain. So in fact, weight gain can occur in up to 25% of patients using gabapentin. So this is a very serious and significant issue. Now, why does weight gain occur in patients taking gabapentin? There are multiple theories as to why this happens. One of them is that perhaps gabapentin is leading to more fluid retention. And we do see peripheral edema in gabapentin patients. So that's going to be a finding and that's a potential cause for the weight gain. Some other possible mechanisms as to why patients get weight gain includes altered gastrointestinal functioning. So perhaps gabapentin's acting on or having effects on GABA systems leading to altered gastrointestinal functioning. So that is one potential cause also of weight gain in gabapentin users. And then also another hypothesis is that perhaps gabapentin is acting on the brain, especially particular appetite centers of the brain. So appetite centers in the brain are in the hypothalamus. So this is where appetite is regulated. So there is some hypothesis that perhaps gabapentin is acting on the hypothalamus and perhaps increasing appetite of patients. And finally, another proposed mechanism for this weight gain includes gabapentin-induced sedation or decreased activity. So gabapentin can reduce activity and this may be leading to patients gaining weight as well. So all of these mechanisms probably are playing some type of role in patients gaining weight. Now, how much weight do gabapentin users gain? So it's been estimated that gabapentin users will gain one to five kilograms of weight per year. So this brings up an important point with regards to gabapentin use because a lot of this weight gain is going to be both dose dependent and time dependent. So the higher the dose of gabapentin you're using, the more likely you're going to have weight gain. And the longer you're taking gabapentin, the more likely you are to have put on weight and more of it generally as time goes on. So this is an important health consequence of gabapentin use. Now moving on to the second health consequence of gabapentin. That is going to be rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis is going to be severe muscle damage. What happens is the muscle breaks down, there's a breakdown of muscle, and it's going to lead to re a release of myoglobin. So muscles break down, myoglobin is released. Myoglobin is the muscle's equivalent of hemoglobin. So myoglobin acts to grab onto oxygen from the bloodstream, but it's only supposed to be in the muscles. If the muscles break down, we have a release of myoglobin into the bloodstream, and this can then lead to issues with that myoglobin traveling through the bloodstream and then impacting the kidneys. So the myoglobin can actually be toxic to the kidneys. So this can lead to acute kidney injury. And if it's not dealt with appropriately, say for not giving a fluid to help remove some of that myoglobin, the kidneys can be damaged enough where we can have permanent kidney injury. And the last important health consequence of gabapentin use, especially long-term use of gabapentin, is cognitive decline and increased risk of dementia. So the reason as to why this is the case is this goes back to the mechanism of action of gabapentin. The mechanism of action of gabapentin involves suppression of neuronal functioning. If we're suppressing neuronal functioning, neurons are not firing. They're not going to be active. And having active neurons helps to maintain neuronal integrity. 
So we get better wiring of neurons. We get more synaptic connections being built when we have more neuronal functioning. So neurons that fire together, wire together. If we're not going to get neurons firing at all, we're not going to get more of that neuronal wiring. So this is the reason, or at least this is the theory as to why gabapentin leads to or increases the risk of dementia. It not only will affect cognitive functioning, but it has particular effects in that it can affect memory. So even in patients who don't have issues with a diagnosed cognitive decline, they can have issues with their memory. So their memory starts to have some issues. They can't remember as much as they used to. They can't think as fast. They have reduced executive functioning. All of these can occur with gabapentin use as well. Again, this is going to occur with more long-term use, and it's going to occur with higher doses. And what we can see is that especially we can see this more occurring in older patients, although there's some evidence showing that even younger patients that take gabapentin for long periods of time, this can increase the risk for dementia as well, all because of what we talked about before. The way that gabapentin suppresses neuronal functioning, it's not going to allow the neurogenesis and synaptogenesis to occur like it should. So this is the reason why we can see increased risk of cognitive decline and dementia in gabapentin use. Please check out my full lesson on gabapentin side effects if you want more information on some of the other side effects of gabapentin use. Also, please consider joining as a member for members-only content. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.